on this week's episode of Three Dad Bod. Carl, you brought up 9-11, and to be honest with you, that was probably the turning point when I decided I cannot trust the media. I remember the days where not every Sunday morning, my dad was out in his underwear out in the front yard picking out the newspaper because he couldn't wait to get that sports section. Sarcastic, witty, and not afraid to mix it up. Pop open a cold one and welcome to Three Dad Bods. Welcome everybody to another edition of Three Dad Bods with Brent, Carl, and Sean. Good day, gentlemen. I use Good that term day. very loosely. Well, Good some morning. of us are more loose than others. And some more lay. Um, yeah. You said you were loose. What do you mean loose? I just relaxed. I think it's more oh, screws loose for oh. him, buddy. I'm glad so, you relaxed. I have a question for you guys as we begin here today. All this talk about the Ukraine, about Israel, you, you hear one story from one side, another story from another side. Some, were the, some stories are like almost right in the middle. Like how in today's news where there's so many freaking sources and you have so many reporters that go uh, anonymous it's more and more these days, like anybody could be a reporter. I could be a reporter. Sean could be a reporter. Carl could be a reporter. Who do you know who to trust anymore? It seemed like as a kid, at least young kid, and granted, we didn't really understand what was going on in the world outside of our own neighborhood during those days. But I feel like people relied or trusted the news more then and today i'll be honest with you guys and and i used to kid around and say look unless it's on espn i don't trust it or i don't ever know about it but even on espn these days i mean that's a rough network right now like where, where do you guys go for news yeah i think a lot of people are even just using twitter or x now i guess they call it too they just post tweets that's the news. Like, no, it's not. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I read a tweet. That's true. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so hard what to went know. Wrong? What it's went hard wrong? to know who to, who to listen to and who's got an agenda. It seems like everybody has an agenda. Or is it um, uh, we're witnessing political activism within journalism? So, I mean, there's, a, there's quite a few... Ex- examples of that over the last few years um there's a i remember seeing a a news report about some flooding down in florida a couple years ago there was a a hurricane i can't remember which one it was um but um the guy uh well he works for cnn um anderson cooper it i remember seeing him reporting about uh this flooding that was happening in the Tampa Bay area. And then there were some pictures that came out where it showed him waist deep in a ditch. And uh, his news uh, producers were standing 20 feet from him and they were barely ankle deep. Do you, have you guys seen that picture? <laughs> I've seen some like that. Yeah. I mean, isn't Anderson Cooper related to the Vanderbilts? Isn't that what mm-hmm. I heard one time? Yeah, his mother. Just something mother. like that. I don't uh-huh. think it's Vanderbilt. Yes. I think it's the. I think she's a like a, a Rockefeller. It's no, somebody I think that related is to like um, big uh, money, some makeup uh, line or something like that. Fashion. Hmm. I, I believe he's disowned too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I really don't know much about the guy. Just that he's uh, whatever. So I mean, so if you hear from. Uh, different sides of the equation a lot of conservative people say it will say oh you can't trust cnn for anything and then on the other side of the aisle you can't trust fox news for anything and then there's the in-betweens that the abcs of the world am brian williams do you remember him uh getting in trouble for lying about getting shot down in a helicopter in iraq yep yeah yeah crazy and then uh 
what's his name? What's that goofball's name from Fox News that got caught lying? Um, Hannity. Which he got one? caught lying about something. Um, no, I'm thinking about Bill O'Reilly. He oh. got so he and um, Anderson Coop, not Anderson Cooper, but Brian Williams. They're like little He's war story liar bedfellows. He he lied about something regarding. Um, so I think it was when England was fighting uh, the Falkland War or something like that. Didn't happen with Snow Brokaw, too. Isn't that why he was? Or Dan Rather, one of those Dan two. Rather got caught lying about um, something George Bush did. I think he reported a, uh, about George Bush uh, and his cocaine habits or something like that. And it was either greatly exaggerated or it was a complete fabrication. I can't remember which. And I, think look, it was, every, I think it was exaggerated because I believe that um, Bush had admitted that he did experiment with cocaine. Yeah, and, and every time I did coke with George, it never was an extraordinary amount. Just a little, just a tiny just amount, right? Two or three lines. <laughs> but that was Carl, you, um, <laughs> Carl, you posted a link last night as we were talking and stuff, and I, it seems like to me that if you're looking at a news source, and you agree with everything that is on there, I feel like that is not a reliable source. Now, I, I think that a reliable source should have items that you don't dis that you don't agree with and items that you do agree with because that's a reality thing. Like I shouldn't agree to everything that is out there because the world doesn't function like that. There has to be things that I disagree with. I and, think in the and, old days yeah, I think in the old days, you're right. I think that's what journalism was all about in the beginning. It was to give you two sides of any perspective or story and then let the person that's listening to the story determine what they believe about that story. Instead, we are opinionizing or editorializing every story a particular way, a particular bias or a way a corporation wants it to uh to be like what like Sean was talking about Fox. Now, who does Fox's numbers come from generally? Let's look at reality. Who are the ones that usually watch Fox? Like the back usually end. conservative, uh, yeah, older Republican voters, right? voters, yeah, people who don't have stream ability that don't go on the internet as much, like you. And I think now it's uh, considered to be an older person's news source. Mm -hmm. And then who goes to CNN? Left. I don't think very many people. Yeah. I mean, I, it's generally considered a left-leaning organization, you you, right? You, you want to be scared. Guess where most Gen Zs get their news? Twitter and Facebook? TikTok. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, my God. It's, like, huge for Gen Z. So, yeah, you, you guys know, are right. I mean, Brent, you made a good point. And the question is, when did it change? I, How did and, it change? I, I don't know if you guys ever watched Bill Maher in the past, but I it used to be I couldn't stand him. I thought he yeah. was far left. I thought it, oh, yeah, I thought he was way out there. But then, like the more and more that I think you to listen to him, it, and I don't know if he's evolved or if he's just tired of of everything. Who maybe was pushing him from the back, and he's like, "Screw this! I'm going to say it is." It's, but as I listen to him more, yes, there's points I disagree with. But there's also a lot of points that I agree with him with also. And, and he, I don't know, to him, like him and, and the Joe Rogans fit that mold of who I at least listen to as far as dependable sources and listen to the thoughts that they project. Um, and again, I don't agree with all their stuff, but I can understand their stuff too. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was... I mean, okay, when was the last time that you guys felt like you were getting a straight scoop from the news? I, I thought 9-11, we were, <laughs> except Brent will disagree with me. But, I mean, based on maybe what they were hearing, the government could have been involved in a conspiracy. But I'll be honest with you, is, Carl. Well, I'll okay, be honest so with you. you take that away from things, to just take the government conspiracy stuff away. Mm -hmm. you, you think about, and I think what you're referring to, Carl, is there was a lot of uh, come togetherness from both sides of whatever. And, and it just seems that. like people wanted to just have this yeah, straight, just 
just everything straight. What's happening? What's going on? And, um, and, and regardless of, like I said, some conspiracy uh, ideas on that, I think people pretty much came together and were, were Look, unified and there wasn't a, there wasn't a divergence. I there. mean, I remember back in the eighties when Ronald Reagan would come on and do a presidential speech. I mean, all the networks, including stopped. what, yeah, even my, the ones my dad was always mad at, all a bunch of liberal bastards. Even those <laughs> networks with, sorry, dad, but even those networks would broadcast the speech, right guys? You'd hear the whole speech. They wouldn't like cut away. They wouldn't edit. Well, they'd still do their little speech after the three heads. I don't heads remember the speech well, after though. But, but I don't I, remember after, that. Usually after his, his uh, televised speeches, I think they had a. Um, a rebuttal. I don't remember that happening. Rebuttal. A rebuttal I, from the other side. You don't side. remember the rebuttal? I, I don't. I don't remember that happening until the nineties. Well, I think. Um, well, Sean, I, I, I think State of the Unions. There was I always could, a rebuttal. Maybe I'm conflating. Yeah, I could be conflating the two. They I don't still know. do that, but no one broadcasts it. Carl, you brought up nine eleven, and to be honest with you, that was probably the turning point when I decided I cannot trust the media. I, oh, really? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, that was probably the turning point in my life where I was like, everything I'm hearing is just dog shit. Did you did you feel like that was a conspiracy right from the get go? I had a lot of questions that were not okay. being asked. There, there was right at the beginning, there was the report of the tower collapsing while the tower was still up and then it collapsed. Like, I remember seeing that. I'm like, right. Well, so there, there were a lot of things. But you combine 9-11 with, like you guys were talking about, where it brought everybody together. And I think the primary focus during then wasn't, it had just happened and you weren't taking time to dissect everything. Right. You were pissed off. You were upset. Yeah. You wanted blood. You wanted revenge. How can somebody come into my country and do this to our people? We got, that's what that feeling was at yeah. that point and it wasn't until the smoke started to clear pardon the pun well part of it was a rescue effort too like i remember that yes. story about the guy that came from wisconsin with his dog all the way across the country right and he was looking through the rubble and then the, how they rescued that one guy i mean you were glued yes, to the tv absolutely. set because you, yeah. you want that guy and, to get saved right and, and despite yeah, what i say and, about all and, that it's despite my feelings about what had really happened those events happened. Firefighters lost their lives. Firefighters mm -hmm. brought people down, went back up, brought people down, went back up, and never oh, yeah. came down again. That happened. I will never, yeah. ever dispute that. That heroes lost their lives saving other people. I, mm -hmm. The other stuff I will, obviously, debate. Oh, I know. With, to my we're going to disagree probably the rest of our lives. <laughs> Power seven. But that's okay. <laughs> so, so right. can you guys think of any, um, any examples of, uh, of the media, uh, distorting truth in, in, in those examples like nine 11 or, um, yeah, right after. Okay. I think it, it, the manipulation and the propaganda began generating because I think there's someone that's pushing behind the scenes. Like I think George Bush and his administration wanted a war in Iraq, that's inconvenient that it was Afghanistan where Had the back Osama door. was. Yeah. Yeah. And he got his war though, because yeah. he had, like Brent said, everybody was wanting blood. Everybody was like, oh, we need to revenge on someone. And Afghanistan was just a bunch of goat herders that had to happen, have some AK-47s. And that didn't take long. We knocked them out and like, you watch 12 Angry Goats or whatever that movie was where the, the special forces team goes in and takes well, out well, like angry 400 goats. crazy afghanis but 12 angry goats oh i don't know 12 something <laughs> we've been on horses i don't know that was that's it's a good war movie we got some australian guy playing the lead captain for u.s special forces team thor he's in it so it's, it's i haven't awesome. seen that yeah i guess you should watch it it's good as i get older some of the stuff really frightens me of, of what's true and what's not. I think we, as we become older, understand that a lot of the things we were even taught in school weren't necessarily mm -hmm. how it happened. I've come to the South 
um, I understand the civil war and what we were taught, but I also understand there's other, it's more than just what we learned in school. There, there's a whole bunch of other things about states' rights versus um, federal rights. And th there's a lot more to things. And so the frightening thing is when you start to question, then you start to think about, well, what about World War II? What don't we know about World War II? What don't we know about World War I? Well, look at you know? Vietnam. Did you Vietnam. guys ever watch We Are Soldiers? At the end of that movie, the press has flown in after the big battle. There's this heap of dead Vietnam Vietnamese, North Korean, or North Vietnamese. And um, I haven't seen that. the one reporter that was with him the whole time was just shaking his head at the the gaggle of reporters that came in and, oh, U.S. won this incredible war, kill, killed all these people and took very few. Oh, no, they didn't. They got hammered pretty hard, too. Right. And war sucks. And they yeah. glorify. Anyway, and I think, Brent, I think you're right. I think that over the years that it, I mean, whatever sells newspapers is what's going to be on that newspaper. And gains what's support. Going, what's that? And and drives the support. You're right. Like, what if, gets if you likes. don't have a country backing, you're not going to get what you want out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I what well, you want to talk about World War II era? Um, you, you can um, go back in in some of the. Uh, you go just think about uh, some of the movies that are produced about living in that time frame and. People were going to movie theaters to get news, um, the newsreels, right? The newsreels that they would play before a movie and they would go through and they would talk right. about this or that. And it right. was always, um, something Gen patriotic and generic, yeah, patriotic yeah, the, the and music in the background. And right. To do very, yeah. yeah. So an American push, <laughs> uh, push war bond sales, right? That was a big yeah. thing. Yep. Train. Yeah. Um, so in, um, uh, so Iwo Jima, you remember the raising of the flag of Iwo Jima? Um, one of the guys that did that, um, was an Arizona Navajo mm -hmm. and he, um, they took him and drug him around the country for the sole purpose of selling war bonds. And I think he ended up, I don't know, it, it, just that. Yeah, for some reason, I don't remember all the details, but that kind of messed him up a little bit. And so there's propaganda well, from all sides. It's just hard this, to know what's true and what's Well, this is what I was not. trying to say the other night. And I would did last night when we were doing our prep for this show. And I said it a little the wrong way. But remember when FDR was president? He had polio. I wasn't alive I don't remember. Then. And well, okay. FDR. FDR had polio, and when he was elected, he would have his the Secret Service and whoever his people were make sure he's standing up. Yeah, you know, every pictures. video and every picture, they, and and the yeah. press completely was in on it. With it. Yes, right. they were yeah. in on it. There was yep. a trip to they, England they, where he put himself at great risk uh, with the Nazi yep. U-boats that could have sunk. Could, we weren't at war yet with them, but if, if the Nazis did sunk Churchill and Roosevelt on the same ship. I mean, American people are like, what are you doing? Because at that time we were very isolationist. We did not want to be in that war. We did not want our soldiers, our we didn't RP, want to you know, be kind in of like world we are now. one either. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. and then there was talk that Roosevelt manipulated the Chinese and Japanese and denied Japan the ability to get oil they needed. And, pushed us into that Pearl Harbor situation. I mean, if the reporters had really done their job, would they have really helped our country or could they have hurt our country? Because if Japan or Germany had won that war, the world would be a completely different place and not necessarily a good place either. Well, right. I think about this too. I, Sean, I don't know if you remember from Cyprus, but there was a teacher, a uh, photography teacher, uh, Mr. Kimura, George Kimura. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Japanese yeah, guy, I remember one of the coolest him. people. Great guy. He, Everybody loved that guy. He was so as, nice. As a kid, he was one of the Japanese rounded yeah. up, put yep. into these camps 
Yeah. One of those mm -hmm. was in Utah, wasn't it? I believe mm -hmm. in Tooele. In like Dugway. Yeah. 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 yeah, there was a huge one in Tooele. And so yeah, when the war happened, they rounded up all the Japanese people and put in the them country, in, regardless of yep. what your matter. background was, what mm -hmm. your standing was, mm -hmm. anything. So how was that? Now, obviously, we weren't putting them into incinerators and killing them in there, but you're rounding up a group of people and separating them from the general public. There was a very small differentiation of what happened in Germany with the Jews and what happened in the U.S. with the Japanese internment camps. Yeah. Very small. They weren't forced into labor and they weren't obviously murdered and starved to death. Right. But they were still in prison. And they were still violated the constitutional I mean, it, right. It was, it was a complete violation of the Constitution by right. FDR. And, and they didn't do that to the Germans. And, they didn't and, do I, that to German citizens no, in the United all. States. They didn't. And, and, or Italians. Yeah. And, yeah. and if it wasn't any, for him, could have, I as long as you known about it without George telling us about that in class. Yeah. Uh, well, and you didn't hear George, the press. George Takai was, uh, isn't that his name? George Takai? Yeah, the guy that plays uh, Star uh, Trek, he, Star Trek dude, he was in that too. Was he? Oh, well, that's so, yeah. yeah. Now, now this this is the question. I, I think okay, the press back in that time could claim, and and I'm not unempathetic to the claim that they did that out of respect and the security of the country. But, didn't but you then during the Italians Vietnam, and the Germans then. I well, I say, you're talking more about um, covering up the fact that FTR had put and not reporting. I mean, okay, what if they made a big deal about the Japanese intern camp camps during World War II? It would have been the right thing to do, but yes. would it yes, have? Of but would it have helped the war effort at all, Sean? No, I, I don't really know. I and it's really what's really sad is we're having this conversation about this and. Um, we don't have very many people left to to ask questions right. about them actually witnessing and history. I wish my grandparents were alive and I could ask them, how much did you know about the Japanese internment camps that were in Tooele in the desert? I, well, I don't know that they knew anything about it because they mom, never mom, talked mom, about mom, it. I've, I've asked my mom about it. And, but you know why it happened? Because it was the Japanese who attacked Pearl Harbor. And I don't know if you yeah, guys I, remember after 9-11, how much hatred and violence happened to Arabic people, innocent Arabic people, Yes, after 9-11. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. One of, of my concerns about, about when about 9-11 was, were they going to do the same thing? Was the right. government going to run out and start grabbing up people of Arabic descent? I had a couple of friends that were um, like oh, yeah. one was Jordanian, one was Arabic. I've got a friend who's Egyptian, who's a doctor. And be back in Cairo now, but my my thought was, oh my gosh, these guys that I care about are possibly going to get wrapped up in this. This is terrible. Um, there was a guy in um, Arizona who was shot. Uh, he was a Sikh, and the person just thought he was Arabic because he was an idiot, doesn't know yeah. the difference between a Sikh and an Arab, but um, it just... Sikhs and Arabs don't wear the same headgear, guys. I don't know if you knew that. It's, anyway, yeah, he, he shot him only because he was wearing uh, a Sikh headdress. So well, what, what, what? I guess the question I'm really trying to ask, guys, is I think the press has changed. Back then, it was more about the United States and, and supporting us, people here. Now, not all the reporters would are obviously were doing that. But I think the general feeling I got historically was that it was more about raw USA support the country, even if it violates some of the press rules or what we were taught in school, especially during crisis periods. Now that changed and maybe it was a, Sean, maybe it was a good thing it changed in some ways, but especially like you're saying about 9-11, I know right after 9-11, there was pressure put almost immediately on the American people not to look at all Muslims that way, which is a good right, thing. Right, right. But, well, if, when we were little kids, we experienced, um, we didn't really experience, but the society experienced the Vietnam War. And 
if you guys um, remember your history books, um, journalism changed a lot in the reporting of the Vietnamese War or Vietnam War versus uh, what had happened in World War II. Well, and it was very critical. War. So I, if you remember, um, there's a very sources. famous... You, you, you yeah, went from there's newspapers very famous, to um, TV. There's a very famous um, photo of a little Vietnamese girl running out of uh, an area that had just been napalm bombed. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the guy that took that video or that picture, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? This yes. little mm -hmm. eight-year-old buck naked girl running the hell out of a, a, a napalm fire. Um, they never, ever reported anything like that during uh, World War II. And they started doing that during Vietnam, um, and it completely changed Americans' perspective in regards to military conflict. I think there were a couple things, too, going on, guys, as well. I, I agree, Sean, what you just said. I think also, too, there was some radicalism on U.S. campuses, but that, those students really weren't in the press at that time, right? And so... No, um, it, it was still the Walter Cronkites of the world right. that, that were, yeah. had gone from from legitimate reporting like they did in World War II to, to Vietnam, which was a complete one eighty. Yeah, um, but no. I and it was until feel, the eighties. I I feel like and and maybe it's because during that time there weren't as many sources as there are today. But I felt like back in the seven sixties, seventies, eighties, even the fifties. The, the reporting was from more knowledgeable people. They, they seem to know more of things and, and what's going on as what happens today. And again, Ooh. it could also be because we went from like newspapers to radio to three TV channels to a gazillion billion. Ooh. Who knows? Every, the, news the news comes out so fast right now. I'm not yeah. certain that... Um, the Chapter. facts are properly vetted the way that they probably tried yeah. to vet things. And it would take them days to do that versus, hey, this, uh, this is happening right now, and uh, this is what we see, and then, you Who know. can get it first? first? Well, I remember it's when the New York, Post, accurate. New York Times and the Washington Post were respected newspapers, not just by liberals, yeah, crazy. but by conservatives right. by, it, as well. Um, I think that, uh, I remember the days where not every Sunday morning, my dad would half naked Well, he was wearing, well, anyway, he was out in his underwear out <laughs> in the front yard, picking out the newspaper because he couldn't wait to get that sports section and listen to, and read about BYU and their miraculous 500 yard passing games, friend, because that was all <laughs> that happened in the eighties. You remember that? <laughs> it's true. But, uh, and then, but. He had always make me read the A section, which was the news section, and then also a little of the B section because sometimes it would run over. But uh, and then he want me to read the editorials. So and he wanted all our, us older kids to do that. And I mean, I think I learned a lot from that. And then it was became a habit. And then news on TV was just a supplement. And I think that might be yeah, part of something that happened between that morning and that. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, Paul and I Harvey. think you're right, Sean. I think it gave Paul you time Harvey. to digest yeah. everything and put my, it in perspective. My dad always we're getting Paul bombed, just hammered all day long. Yeah. When you think about it, Paul Harvey was like the OG of podcasts. Yeah. He wasn't part yeah. of the yeah, station. He was. he was just how did, on the radio. How did he the week. rest of the story? How yeah. did he end <laughs> that? He would always end it. Good day. Yeah. yeah. That's it, it was, the rest uh, of the story. I, I remember going to see my, we would spend time with my grandmother. In, uh, on her too. little hobby farm in central Utah. And every morning we'd get up and Paul Harvey was on the radio. That Paul was, Harvey that, was a treasure. That was fun. That, I, I, that was fun. Remember that on around. road trips. Every morning you'd flip it on to the radio, find, yeah. try and tune it in and find a Paul Harvey in there somewhere. And see, so, oh, so did you gee, ever a podcast? Did you ever say that he was? Did you ever at that time think, Oh, I wonder how much of what Paul Harvey is saying is propaganda or never how much of it's it. activism or, uh, no, you never did. But now yeah. you can't get through the news without wondering. So are there, um, 
are there some sources that you guys uh, trust or believe in more than others or some that you just would laugh at if uh, versus, yeah, I, I love these guys, but these guys over here are jokers or do you have some opinions they, they, on they, that? A few years ago, they did this big kind of like uh, one of those T graphs, those graphs like that where they had put like, this was conservative on the right side, left side was liberal. And then all the news sources that were right in the middle, straddling either side, this leans a little right, this leans a little left, mm -hmm. but not enough More towards to... the center. Yeah. Right. I think they're right about that because it's, I mean, well, the question to... is who put that together? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously more a computer AI in the future, probably, but. I think though that, for example, right now there was a, I showed you guys a link. There's a company that's doing an app called um, Grounded, I think it's called. And what they're trying to do on every story is give it one of those ratings. Like, you know, we found mm -hmm. some errors here, but then on the other hand, this side was editorializing this is more of an editorialization rather than facts and this one's more of facts than my uh, question is opinion. then well who's behind that that's well that's, always that's my obviously concern. always that's always gonna, my that's always gonna be i know that's always gonna be an issue but you can see something like that and, and you can pick it apart yourself and say okay i i agree with this and a, a person who's somewhat well, well read is going to be able to look at those things and figure out whether or not they're being truthful. Yeah, like, yeah. But how is a but show like the in order voice to become that, on? uh, what's that? How is a show like the voice still on TV? Oh, I mean, yeah. the Honestly. voice, isn't that the, isn't not, that not the, the voice, but what's it isn't called? That the singing the... competition. Yeah. Oh, no, you're talking what's... about the view, the, the view. four ladies, oh, the view, the, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 editorial. it's a complete editorial, but you can't tell me anybody that watches that thinks that's that it's anything news. but an editorial. Yeah. Right. There are right, people that news. do. There are people that well, think that's the hard standing I, I news right there. I don't there. think they're very bright. Well, it's like, <laughs> like TikTok. It's not the but it's, man. It's the same thing as Fox. I mean, you go watch that guy's I name, know. Sean Hannity. Watch yeah. the Sean Hannity thing. He's a freaking blowhard for uh the republican party well so, it's no different than the view it's just one side of the coin versus the other well i remember that all started back in the 80s remember the mclaughlin report so you would oh have, yeah on pbs that was actually really good it was uh, good, but it was also a little nutty they had some well, nuts on there but then the but other thing was phil when donahue they, you remember him yes. yeah yeah the og of talk the shows freaking liberal nut jerry show. springer uh, yeah, <laughs> or what yeah. was the guy that looked in the? What was it? he's on Fox now? But the guy that opened up the tomb, oh. Geraldo Rivera. When Fox hired him, I was like, hiring. If he he's didn't get nut. punched in the nose, he'd be nowhere. That's the exactly. only reason why. <laughs> he got hit in the nose with a chair, didn't he? Fist got uh, punched in the face. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well. I think too, sometimes you just have to use your gut and try to remember, like, I think Brent was, said it last night to me. Um, I think some, he, you, you sent me a quote, something about a lot of times news is your own bias. You believe whichever side yeah. your bias lies on. Right. And I think Sean, you said it right at the beginning of this discussion that sometimes you've just got to be mature enough to step outside the that uh what do they call those a uh, glass chamber that you create or a uh, echo your chamber box whatever your box, box that you yeah. live in yeah right you've got to step outside the echo chamber of things that you like to hear reasons why you want to dislike or hate one side and just <laughs> kick back and say okay let's look at this logically instead of emotionally and so do you need to be somewhat uncomfortable during a yeah. newscast to i well, think so I think what I, I think need there's to something do, to that. I and, and I think what you have to do is is first stop and think and say, all right, why am I hearing this? Mm -hmm. And then go from there. Why yeah, is there? Why would I need? Is there some hear this? something underneath the the sheets that uh, they're pushing? Exactly. Like, like I don't know. I don't know. Back in 
when George Bush was president and he was pushing the war. I mean, well, a lot, like uh, with the whole, uh, well, there's mass weapons of mass destruction. Well, that turned out to be a freaking lie. It did. And, well, and, well, uh, even well, right it, now with this Israeli conflict, as this is going on and this news is being shoved in our face, here are billions of dollars being sent to the Ukraine. And oh, yeah. their president well, is using, doing like a, a pay He's using Israel as, as an and... excuse to send money to their Ukraine, which is really interesting. Yes. Like, okay, well, they have this... nothing to do with each other. Well, the pre- <laughs> I, I think right now the press has completely lost any credibility yeah. since 2016 when Trump won the election. They have gone when they lost sh- crazy crap. and illogically, emotionally. I mean... Both sides are just bankrupt when it comes to trying to present truth. I, I, I can't believe anything politically anymore. And I mean, look at the example during the 2020 election with Biden. No, no one in the mainstream press took at all credible Hunter Biden's briefcase and the fact that Joe was possibly oh, getting a payoff from Ukraine. Lot well, off. guess China. what we're involved in now? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Brent's right. We are oh, paying, him, we're Trump still was, giving uh, them billions was it, of dollars. He was impeached over a, a phone call to the Ukraine? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that not That was sh- telling them they shady. don't get any money. And the Russian, you know? the whole Russian, uh, there were the parts about how he was um, in cahoots with some Russian agents or whatever, and it turns out that I'm sure it was Hi- false. Hillary Clinton actually paid them for the information. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it's not good. But okay, so I asked a question a little while ago. Are there mm-hmm. places where you guys feel like you can go where there's some intellectual honesty? Um, they strip away the emotion and just put things out there as uh, as fact, or is there literally no place you can outside look? the United States? So one of the things that I <laughs> I, I like to and, and that, this uh, yeah I, I think that in U.S. Too. politics. I listen to, yeah. Eng- I read English newspapers. Or- yeah, there you go. That's or what I Israeli, do. Yeah. So I like reading the Daily Mail mm-hmm. from England. It's actually yeah. pretty decent. And it's what's really cool is that you see stuff about both Republicans both and Democrats being idiots. And it's so they think we're idiots yeah. in the United States. <laughs> I mean, that's because we don't. That's because we wasted a whole shipload of tea. Who's that guy, Pierce, uh, what's his name? The guy, English Bronson. guy. Pierce Morgan. Comes... Pierce he... Bronson. Pierce now, Morgan. I, you know what? Uh, he, he gets criticized, but he has pro-Palestinian people on, even though he disagrees with them, mm-hmm. almost every night. I mean, I, that dude. I like I mean, him. He sometimes gets his butt handed to him, but at least the guy's he gets, got. Yeah, he gets criticized justly so for some things. I disagree oh, with him. On some things, he's a he's an adamant uh, second Gun amendment control. hater. Yeah, he does. He's a Brit, so he doesn't think in it. And I hundred percent disagree with him on that stuff. But there are other things that are that's um, fine. You know, liberal that's okay. causes that he will rip up and yeah. down. And well, I'm look, look at Russell Brand. He's British too. Yeah, and and Brand was starting to watch his podcast, and the U.S. press didn't like it because he was calling him on their mm-hmm. shit. Right, he yeah. was saying, yeah. yeah. You guys are lying. And they're yeah. like, let's find something to shut Let's find some up. dirt on them. So with Brand, though, it, I like a lot of the stuff that he says, but I also understand that he's very strong to the right. And I lean he wasn't more to the right. Though, he was, no, he he was. Cha- that's a change because he Brent. was big time lib. And I mean, coming from England, that's very that's Hollywood and yeah. And so. maybe he had to be like that to get gigs. Well, you know, I not think, be black balls. Well, there are people think, that claim that if you aren't left leaning, that you won't get anything, which is right. really interesting because I don't know if you guys paid attention to history class, but uh, if you remember McCarthyism, do you, do you know the term well, McCarthyism? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, and they run around accusing of everybody of being communists. Right. I mean, that was, and, that and was if he didn't like it and that was Hollywood, he was going through Hollywood and blaming all of them. And yeah. So, I mean, but it's, I, it's just flipped instead of them chasing out uh, liberals and communists. Yeah. Now they're chasing out conservatives. I think we've got to stop. We got to stop labeling it just leftist and, and conservatives because 
I mean, I would say uh, Tucker, I, Russell uh, Brand, Trump and Brand and Tucker. I think they're more populist. I mean, Tucker's just on a level of all of his own. Yeah. Um, and I then, would agree with that. It's, it's, people... it's definitely more complicated than left yeah. and right. And then, and then you've got conservative Republican conservatives that are pro war, like that Graham guy out in South Carolina. And then you've got like this guy, FDR or uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Jr. He's a progressive, but he's not like. Uh, he's an old school like Democrat. Crazy. Yeah, he's, he's not an old a... school Democrat. He wants, yeah, and that's why he's getting a lot of support. I think he yeah. has a chance of really causing it's also some trouble. Why he's getting a lot of pushback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I think that a lot of like Tucker Carlson, he made his name not from the way he leans, but because he wasn't afraid to call people out for doing wrong things, and that's what yeah. the news should do. The news should be calling out people for making incorrect choices. They should be. He was telling don't. his corporate over overlords to get That's screwed. why he got fired. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. he got caught lying about something, too. I don't remember what no, it was. No, it was telling the truth is what it was. It was that he was sexually harassing his women on his staff. That's the reason. Which well, is what Russell Brand got accused of, which is what... Convenient. Yes, absolutely. It's what they do. It's, you know what, if, you if you're a white male that, and you're Sean, in the press, you can't question a, a victim. That's ever. the thing that they're going to throw at you is sexual harassment or racism that will get mm -hmm. you axed off the air quickly and make you disintegrate to nothing. It's all true until it's proven wrong. Well, so I, you can smear someone's reputation from here to kingdom come. But then, oh boy, when it's finally revealed, that was all a lie. It's too late. They're off the air already. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Great. examples of uh, people who have claimed victimhood, and, and it's not been true. But on, I, I do believe that most of that stuff is, um, I, I think that there's a lot less of, of the false allegations that turn out to be um, false. Well, it's, than, all all but, I'm saying is seen it's that convenient happen, that Brand gets People deserve their day in court. Yeah, like. Like, How long remember, ago were those accusations, Brent? How long ago were the brand accusations? They were years ago, ago. A couple months ago. Just yeah, a couple no, no. months. I mean, they, when they happened. Years when they ago. Happened. Years. Right. Yeah. years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, they got, they, they, and it all happened with that Supreme Court nominee that ran. I mean, they were accusing him of stuff that happened when he was in college 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. But, but what happens is if you go against the narrative, they will do everything to tear you down. If you remember Joe Rogan, when he talked about him taking the, they said, oh, Joe's promoting taking horse pills. Well, that isn't what he did. Horse he took dewormer. A, yeah, yeah. He, he, he took a prescription that has been prescribed over a billion times. Yeah. <laughs> For 50 it, years. Well, so, yes, yes but it was against the narrative. That, uh, he was taking something that was classified as a, Horse dewormer, but it's also been prescribed for people for 50 years. So, yeah, it's, it went it's against the narrative, it went against white COVID, lie, right? it went against the vaccine, yep. it went yep. against it. So let's shut him down. Hey, he's promoting the wrong thing. Right. There's no doctor is going to kill you. No. John Stossel, you remember John Stossel? I love watching I love John, John Stossel. Stossel. Oh, he nice. has an actual interview. This was before the election. And after the election, he brought it up again, where he was interviewing a, a former staffer of Joe Biden when he was senator back in the 80s. And Joe sexually tried to molest her in a tunnel <laughs> by the Capitol. Grabbed her. Yeah, grabbed her. He grabbed her breast. Dra yep. breast mm -hmm. And then tried to get his finger underneath her pants. Now, <laughs> you tell me when, what's that guy you were talking about that's related to the Vanderbilts? When did he come out on msnbc or cnn and talk about that story right during the election oh but trump's miss and i believe it i believe trump probably harassed her so i don't think anybody denies that no i don't think it but but it's just so convenient who they pick as a winner and who they pick as the loser and it's all controlled by that media that the ones that decide who gets the airtime i just it's hard to believe I have a real hard time taking anything they say seriously. By the way, Anderson Cooper, his mother is Gloria Vanderbilt. Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. 
stupid Vanderbilts. It's a nice university, she, though. Isn't she Vanderbilt? Isn't she a uh, uh, railroad? Uh, yeah, is railroad, that where they made maybe. their money? I thought she was like a, a, on the backs of poor people. Yeah, you Vander, bet. Vanderbilt was all railroads. They built the, the railroad system the, on the backs of the Chinese. Hey, on, on a side yeah. note, do you guys understand? Do you guys know how Vanderbilt University came about? Or no, wait, I take it back. I'm getting mixed up. No, Stanford. I, didn't know. I get Stanford and Van mixed up. Is on it Stanford? Stanford? Yeah, the family, their their boy or whatever, couldn't get into Harvard or into Yale, so they basically started their own university. Stanford. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Uh, King nice. Henry the Eighth. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Uh, what now, have you been in the Vanderbilt? Um, the Commodore in Asheville, uh, and in no Asheville, North Carolina. The, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, yeah, I went it's, through that. You got a bowling alley inside. And the McDonald's has a grand piano in it. Grand piano nice. in there. It's, it's yeah. like the nicest McDonald's you've ever been. Cool. It's Asheville's crazy. an awesome city. Anyway, sorry. It is pretty. Ventured off anyway. there, as I normally do. Um, well, so what do we do I, about I this? I don't guys? have a trusted source. Well, I, I really honestly, don't. Honestly, I think talking about is a good thing, but also recognizing and then um, promoting people that, uh, um, that, you think are generally honest and and things that they uh talk about so i i mean i can give you a couple examples of uh sources that i use that i trust more than others if you're interested okay. um yeah okay. so Re reason magazine reason.com is uh i think pretty uh good about things uh the cato institute is really good you mentioned john stossel i think he's one of the most honest uh uh, people that journalism has had in the last he's not a conservative years. no he's yeah. not and he's but he's not a liberal either no he's, he's he'll rip everybody I don't know what he is john stoss he's he's john stoss he'll rip anybody if uh they deserve it um mrs.org is really good who's really interesting to listen to if you get him uh outside of his magic show is pen gillette i don't know if you've oh, yeah. ever listened to him talk about things but man, he is, that dude is so brilliant and so smart and so well read. It's just, it's not even funny. I, when I first ran, uh, came across him and some of his, uh, stuff that was, didn't have anything to do with magic, I couldn't believe how smart he was and how it just well, uh, read and, and, and informed he was. So, you know who I really liked and I know he's gone, but Brinkley, that was one guy I always liked listening to Christy? because, uh, um, she's no, the gone. older guy. Not what do you Christy mean? Brinkley. She's like the older hot Brinkley. and 70. No, the old, not you guys. It's not the bikini. I know you're thinking that. No, it was the older dude, the Brinkley. Um, An he older dude too. wearing a bikini? That's well, really that gross. Was Russ that's Russ that's weird. Weird. like that? Russert, before he died of a heart attack, I always sure. liked hearing him. You, uh, Tim Russert right. in a bikini? Shut up, you two dorks. Come <laughs> on now. What? Interesting news. David Brinkley. There. David Brinkley. That's oh. what I was thinking about. So I'm confused. Christy Brinkley. Oh, man. No Christy news Brinkley there. was fabulous at delivering the news. You know, you know who? Okay. I don't always agree with her. Who's the blonde one that got in Trump's grill during the debate? And she used to be on Fox. Now she went to CNN. Now she does her own show. What's her name? Um, no idea. Oh, yeah, I know who really you're talking about, but I can't remember her name. Yeah, yeah. well, I respect oh, the fact that she took her lumps and uh, gave it. I think she gave it back to Trump pretty good, too. I, I was impressed. I know she did. I think the Trumpies get really uptight if anybody goes after Trump. I personally don't care. I, I didn't support him in the beginning it's, anyway. It's good. It's good to it's see good. any good. journalist going after any politician. 31. Every single yeah. one. And that, that's honestly, that's what we should see. Like, what do they call it? The fourth estate or whatever the, the I can't remember. It's, it, it, we need honest journalism so that we can hold people in power accountable, whether it's politicians or powerful corporates, uh, corporate mm -hmm. people. Um, it's important. And I think we're lacking that and, and hopefully, um, well, People I think can we, overcome it. I think, Sean, bringing up a couple different sources that you can go to, I think, of course, we all have to look into that ourselves. But 
I think one thing too in social media it would help is if if we didn't immediately and I know Brent, you like to have some fun sometimes on your Facebook and some people get really irate and upset, I noticed. And I, I used to Yeah. You do it on purpose a little bit, but uh they stir the pot as I call it. Pot stir. But uh usually he smokes it. But in election time, Facebook becomes unbearable. And I've in the last few years have just decided not to really participate very often. And if I do participate, I've noticed sometimes I've posted emotionally and then I have to pull it. Uh or I am intelligent about it and really look it over carefully before posting it. And those I'm proud of and those I'll keep on there. So I guess my commitment is just to try to abstain from um, being a problem, being the reason. I'll tell you, that one, don't one way, reactively, don't do right. anything in a, in yeah. a reaction. And right. one, I think one way to weed out all the junk is if news organizations, whether you're a website, whether you're a cable news network, even Facebook or what you're reading, do not ever post a news story by an anonymous source. That has no, got geez. to stop. If you're That's not willing stop. to put your name behind a story, how yeah. can you trust that? How do you know where the source is from? And so many times these anonymous source comes out with a, a story here and a story there that's damning to somebody. Stop the that. Stories are lies. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and I'm okay. I mean, some someone said that, well, you can't have people who have sexually harassed publicly come out, which isn't true because if they're right and it did happen, there's ways you can prove it. Yeah. Yeah. And, but why and did frankly, you wait until this moment to bring right. it forth? Like, because why didn't you do it when it happened? Well, why do you wait 20, whole, 25 it hurts years? It's the whole movement. It yeah. hurts the whole movement because yeah. then we look at it and go, well, for exactly the reason you're talking about. Well, why did you come out 20 years later? Why? And then, but if there's a face, if someone's brave enough to stand up and say, yeah, this happened 20 years ago. Right. I was scared. Here's why I didn't do it. Because there is some truth. Abusers do intimidate victims a lot of times. And victims are scared to come out. And I, I don't have a problem. But my, get an attorney, attorney up. And go out and get in front of the public and say, yeah, this happened. Okay. You're going to get some death threats. Uh, we can send the police out to investigate those. Most of those are bogus anyway. No one's really going to kill you most of the time. Um, I guess there are some legitimate issues that you got to worry about if you become a public figure like that. But uh, my gosh, I mean, like the whole Epstein Island thing. There are some brave yeah. people that went on John Stossel and a couple of these others. Young ladies that talked about, of course, the press ignored some of those stories, but I respect that. And my gosh, if if one of the people I support get caught, like there's this guy Ballard, Tim Ballard. Um, I was remember I was promoting his show and talking all about how great a guy he was, and then there there was some anonymous reports that he sexually harassed people, and at first I was very skeptical. And then one of them did come public and then another one. And I'm like, well, good for those women. And I also felt bad on you, Tim. That's disgusting that you did that. Now, it doesn't mean what he did was terrible as far as saving people, young people from abuse. But I'm just, it, it makes a big difference to me. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Like this Russell yeah. Brand accusers, come out in public then. If he did this 20 years ago, come out in public. And yeah, what, why story. do you do it when his newscast begins to come forward? Like, why didn't you do it when he started making money as an actor? Why didn't it's he all, do it when he was doing drugs and all that stuff? Well, that I always mean, makes it a little bit questionable when things come out 20 years after the yeah. fact. What's your motivation? Or, did this, look, I mean, if you got paid hush money and you accepted the hush money, that, that's on you. Oh, and, you mean and, the and, stripper with Trump? Yeah. Yeah. And then her attorney ends up in jail. That's what's funny. What a scumbag. I, I mean, look, if, if you're going to accept millions of dollars to keep your story quiet at the time that it happens, then when this person mm -hmm. starts to blow up, you don't. That makes you just as bad as they were. You accepted hush money from what happened to you, and now you're coming out. 
for what? More money? What was it all you know, about? Was thing, it all about the money? Well, let's talk about what our kids, what, Sean, what would you recommend as far as how to share news stories? Because my mom, she'll just send emails. She'll be like, or tele, telegraph, I guess it's called, telegram or whatever that one is that the government can't read. Um, I'll, I'll all of a sudden get barraged with conservative news stories from my mom, like links. Um, like, you think the yeah. government gives a crap about you reading a uh, different conservative? Uh, no. Mom, your yeah, mom got a government know. watching her? <laughs> Someone outside the well, house what, my, my point is no one reads my mom's stuff. She sends. Sorry, mom. Uh, but <laughs> I can't. You got eyes on Karen. He's your own Karen here. All right. I think, I think Karen, I'd read anything that you sent. I respect yeah. your opinion. Well, I'm just being honest, Bob. But I think the better thing would be is to discuss it with your kids, right? Well, I to think you just have to have conversations. It. And then yeah. at the same time, um, without trying to, we talk about reporters putting their bias into their own stories. I have a conversation with your kids about things without putting your own Editorializing bias. Editorializing or opinionating. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that's hard. I, I mean, there's hard there's a do. difference between but trying to, to raise do. your children correctly, but there's a and raising them to be able to think for themselves. Right. You know, it is something that schools don't seem to do nowadays is teach people critical thinking Probably. skills, and, and that's one of the problems. People don't have those skills because they were never taught, and their people base their opinions off of emotional uh, whatever. And that's never good when you. So does your wife just do the teaching? Cause you just, you just hang out cause she's the therapist. And you, <laughs> but you, you do give a good speech though, Sean. I appreciate well, that. Well, I, I would say that uh, most things that I talk to my kids about are usually done through very logical um, and kidding. non-emotional uh, methods. So. Right. Well, Brent and, just talks to his through Facebook. <laughs> but you, boom, you gotta remember too, though, like. In talking to them, things were different than when we were kids. You got your news twice right. a day, 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Now, if something yeah. big happened, there was a cut-in special news. report. And when that yeah. happened, everybody that stopped. That was scary. You always that was stopped scary. and watched what happened. Yeah. But, but you're like, now, like you were you talking about. You don't see that much anymore, do you? Never. I mean, when's you the last time you saw something news, cut in? There's, like if there's a shooting or something like 9 that. 9-11. And, was the last yeah. thing I, time I remember. And then remember. everybody flocks to the cable channel or Twitter or. Yeah. And then yeah. it's just, you just get inundated with it nonstop. But emotions. Like you were saying People earlier, start Carl, using their emotions to spread whatever gobbledygook. And, yeah. and, t and today, say, news, Sorry. news goes Sorry. so fast, like you were talking about earlier. It just comes at you like the minute it happens, it's being. It's hard to forward. digest. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's like the second that it happens, you got to be the first source that's out there. And we didn't have that. We, it would at mm -hmm. least be a couple hours before the special report got interrupted. And they would put things together and they would put their scripts together and probably well, remember when Reagan and all that. That first attempt, that first assassination attempt. I remember Carl Sandburg. <laughs> yeah. We even stopped cool. class, remember? Yeah. And, and we yeah. were watching shuttle. on the TVs. Yep. Yeah, I and remember when that. This, First space, space shuttle, shuttle went up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I remember in high school when Challenger blew up or yeah. Columbia, it was yep. just horrible. But I remember when that plane yeah. crashed in Kearns in high school. Oh, you remember yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big deal. I have no recollection of that. Oh, yeah. You don't remember that? No. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, just the big events. But well, guys, hey, it's been a fun, fun night tonight. I think uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, hopefully someone that's listening tonight realizes that oh, dad maybe, bods is the only source for news. I think that's what well most that, people will, will understand. That, maybe the news isn't as, as terrible as we think it is. Cause I know a lot of people that just give up and just stop listening completely. And I don't know if that's good either. I think though, like Sean made some good points about finding some sources that you're really comfortable with. Maybe in, and then every once in a while, push yourself to listen to a side or view that you normally wouldn't support. You should um, listen he, to, to different sources that yeah. you might not necessarily agree with, but because specifically because they're going to say something yeah. that the well, other side that maybe you do agree with isn't going to talk about. Well, and it's important to know both sides of those things. 
I've had that happen to me. I, so I was reading one of Brent's posts one time and, uh, I of course agree with Brent most of the time. And, uh, right. so I, I went in cause one of your friends posted something that was just like, I was like, what a, what a dumb ass. So I went in and started reading, on uh, reading up on the other side, but then all of a sudden things started changing a little bit. I'm like, Ooh, I didn't really look at this very carefully. And then. And like the whole WMD in, in Iraq. Okay. It took a while before we found out it was a bunch of lies, but, um, I don't know why pal's pretty upset at George Bush, uh, senior junior, it's because he was pushed onto a stage and lied before the entire world. I believed all that BS at the time. Now yeah. I'm like, I don't trust any of it. I, and should I have trust? I, and they were saying that was a lie back then. And I wasn't listening to that side. I was blocking them out. I didn't want to hear their side. I wanted to hear my side, which was, let's go kill those Iraqis. Right. It was wrong. Wrong. I, I, I said earlier, there's really nothing that I ever listened to as far as news, but that was actually incorrect because I forgot <laughs> on Sunday mornings, I always watch CBS Sunday mornings. I remember and when you watch, always watch Jon Stewart. He's just crazy. <laughs> I, I did watch crazy. Jon Stewart for a while, but CBS Sunday <laughs> morning is these feel good stories all the time. Oh, like yeah. to me, that's the news that I like to hear away from the mumble jumble, the violence is just feel good stories. And a couple of days ago, um, our good friend Marty posted a really, really good feel good story. I, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was a lady who had um, gone through like a garbage. Well, she looked in a garbage can and found somebody's military uniform in there. And she dug it out. And wanted to find whose uniform this was. And all she had was just the last name. And so she was searching and searching, couldn't find anything on it. Two years went by and um, she was able to find the obituary of the soldier. And he had killed himself. He suffered from PTSD, um, served oh. two tours in Afghanistan, I believe it was. I could be mistaken. But. More importantly, he had a son that was left behind who had this void that was left in him with the loss of his father. And so this story showed her showing up to this place thousand miles away with the uniforms and, and surprising this boy with uniforms of his father, the, a cherished piece of, of something that he can hold on to. That's cool. And, and to um, me, story. those are like, that's a good story. Those are news stories to me. Those are great stories to me. Yeah. Well, well, Hey guys, one hear thing, that. I love this topic this week because next week we're going to be talking to a guy who had an amazing experience. He's coming in from Sean, uh, Sean's family. Alan, I think is a friend of his. He has an amazing story. I don't want to give too much of it away, but. He has this incredible near death experience. And one of the things, <laughs> one of the things he talks about is actually the news and the heavenly person he was referring to or his guide, uh, actually gave some advice and I didn't want to bring any of it up that I heard, but cause I want to save it for next week, wow. but I had no idea. A, this excited, is an incredible man. story. Yeah. Incredible story. He, and I don't think this is giving away too much. He was clinically dead for 45 minutes in a body bag yeah. and was revived. Which is unbelievable. Crazy. Is, How does that happen? His body temperature was 77 degrees when they got him to the hospital. Wow. Wow. It's like. It's amazing. I mean, that's, that's like really dead. That's like rigor mortis stuff. Rigor mortis had set in. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, it's an incredible story. I won't say anything else, oh. but I've read the book. His book, he has one book out. He has another book coming in December. Um, and my parents will be listening to this, so we better be on good behavior next week. Fucking A. Oh, my dad was really fascinating. Oh, we don't want Kent That's... getting at us, getting mad. Oh, no, you don't want Kent. Actually, I'm more afraid hey, of your mom. Uh, Maybe, my mom's well, tougher. Yeah, you'll, just, true. you'll just pass the phone away from me, Sean. You're in here. Well, my dad's a little bony talk. now. and he, he's a little, uh, he doesn't drink enough milk, so you guys can take him now, I think. So, <laughs> oh, that, I, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, no, let me know when I can you, take your mom. Hey, audience, that that's the one right. you've got to listen <laughs> to. Is 
This <laughs> next week, though, you guys do not want to miss this podcast. It's going to be one of the one, one of the most incredible stories you hear. So cool. And Brent, thanks for bringing that one up that Marty posted because it's a good one. You get really, a chance that, to take a look. It's it's a great story. Yeah. It really is. Thanks, Marty. Cool. Great Thank episode, guys, and we'll talk to you guys later. Asta. Thanks for listening to Three Dad Bods, and make sure to catch their past episodes on Spotify, Apple, and Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure and leave a comment to help stroke their fragile egos. 